Austin Tech Connect is the official podcast of the Austin Technology Council. Founded in 1992, ATC exists to help unite the local technology ecosystem and to encourage the spread of community, collaboration, and conversations in Central Texas. This podcast is sponsored by SailPoint. They are a leading provider of identity security for the modern enterprise, empowering organizations worldwide to put identity security at the core of their business. With a foundation of artificial intelligence and machine learning, SailPoint Identity Security delivers the right access to the right identities and resources at the right time. Now, here is this week's episode. Welcome to Austin Tech Connect the podcast about the future of Austin's technology community. My name is Tom Singer, and I am with the Austin Technology Council. And every single week on this podcast, we try to bring you interviews with a wide variety of people whose companies are touching the ecosystem of technology here in Austin. And today, we are joined by Balaj Barna. Hey, Balaj, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Happy to be here. So Balaj is the U.S. head of engineering and the Austin site lead for a company called Wise, and they are expanding their footprint here in Austin. They're a new member of the Austin Technology Council, and I thought it would be fun to talk to him about what it is they do, why they're committed to Austin, and all of that. So we're going to dive right in. But for those of you who don't know him, like I said, he is the lead of engineering for this amazing product. And he's working to have, have it be better for U.S. customers so that they can move money efficiently overseas. So he's also married with a kid, but here's one for you. He has another kid on the way any day now. So his main hobby is going to be diaper changing for the next couple of months. But when I asked him a little bit about his history, he is a two-time World Cup kickboxing champion. So I've got to be really careful what I say because uh, he could probably kick my ass. So there you go. So... Blaj, let's jump in. You, you've come here uh, just in the last two years from Hungary. Let's hear a little bit about your your background. Where did where did your career get started? Um, thank you for uh, for the opportunity to to chat to you. It's uh, it's amazing to get to know more people in Austin. Um, I started uh, in tech fairly early. Uh, I was eight. I could say that I didn't have a chance. My father is uh, also a software engineer. I started with uh, assembly, uh, C, C++, Java, C Sharp. Uh, and then uh, after university, I quickly joined Morgan Stanley and I always worked in the financial space. And then uh, in 2017, I joined WISE, uh, which was the hottest startup at the time in Europe. Uh, we've had uh, 500 employees at the time. Now we are at 5,500. So I was part of this huge growth that the company had. Uh, and uh, in 2022, I moved over to Austin to help build our new office here. And um, I'm leading, I'm currently leading the uh, U.S. engineering teams to build the product uh, in the U.S., so that's a brief intro. No, that that's great. That's phenomenal growth for a company in, in six or seven years. So how many people do you have in the United States now? Uh, over 700. Yeah, I knew that you were you were pushing in on 1,000. So I want to hear a little bit about, about Wise. But before I do that, I want to ask you a little bit about this two-time World Cup kickboxing championship. I don't, I don't want to let that go, just throwing it out there. Uh, you've always been involved in martial arts, but let's talk about, about that. Um, yeah, I, I, um, this is something that I, um, I always wanted to do. Like, uh, since I was a little kid, I had, uh, like two passion, like one was programming and, uh, the other one was martial arts. Um, I started with the karate and I tried a bunch of sports and then I, uh, I tried kickboxing and it just like really, uh, resonated me, with me. I won the first couple of like championships that I entered. So I just went with it and, uh, I did, uh, I competed until I was, uh, I was 19. You know, it's interesting. I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and, and business leaders who have martial arts backgrounds. Do you think there's something in the discipline that you learn in martial arts that allows you to to be focused and to succeed in your career? I think so. Um, I think there is a lot of like good things about it. Uh, discipline is one of them. Uh, learning how to control yourself, control your emotions, you know, under like hard circumstances, like facing your fears, fears are all things that, uh, that you need in business as well. 
So my, my oldest daughter, when she was 14, 15, received a black belt in a mixed martial arts program that she was in. And her master didn't just give out belts. This wasn't like a belt factory martial arts studio. You, you had to earn your way through it. And, you know, there were times she, she didn't get promoted with the rest of her class to the next belt. And she spent about four years really dedicated to it. And I always remember when she took that test for the black belt uh, the second time. And he said, you know, whatever she does, because she wasn't a good fighter. She was really good at the katas. She was really good at all the other stuff. But, you know, she was a little tiny. She was little. And he said, whatever she does, she can't leave the mat. And she got beat pretty hard and she lost the fight and she was almost crying. And it was kind of like the karate kid, right? She was just standing there shaking, but but she pushed through. And the master told me afterwards, he goes, oh, I didn't think she had it in her. She pushed through that. And I see that in her life now. She's 27 years old. And, and I see in her career and her life and the things that she does, you know, that she just has that ability. And I think she learned some of that. I think she came by some of it naturally. But I think she learned some of it doing that that mixed martial arts program was just that that dedication, knowing herself and knowing she could get through it. So what advice do you have for, for up and coming young people who want to go into the martial arts or, or want to go into software development? I think like one of the biggest things that I learned, I still remember the story. Uh, it was my first competition. Uh, I was only training for a couple of weeks and I remember like going to this arena and, uh, uh, I was thinking like, what what am I doing? You know, like I've uh, only been training a couple of weeks. Uh, this is crazy. You know, like I should just go home and you get like closer and closer and you know, like, okay, uh, there's no way out. Like I cannot just leave. Like all my friends are here. They're looking at me, you know? So you kind of learn that uh, like some things are just inevitable and um, you have to face them and uh, you have, you learn how to stay calm and just like go through it. And, uh, that happened to me a couple of times in my life in like crucial moments. And, uh, I will never forget that first one. Nice. So let's switch over and talk about wise. So, you know, you talked about, you joined the company in 2017, there were 500 people. Now there's 5,500 people. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how the company got founded. I know you didn't found it. You were in the 500s of employees, but let's talk a little bit about why the company was founded and, and where it went up until 2017. And then where you've seen it gone, go since. Okay. So let me start with the problem. So the problem uh, that we are solving is moving money across borders. Um, it's a it's a very big problem around the world. Um, if you move money between two countries and two currencies, uh, what you will get from banks is a very let's call it a suboptimal product. It's gonna take days uh, for the money to land in the other country. Uh, they're going to give you an exchange rate that they kind of make up. It's not going to be the mid market rate. And then on top of that, they're going to tell you, um, how much you're paying them for this service, but it's not the real fee because the real fee is going to be hidden in the exchange rate, uh, that they're giving you. Right. So it's like a very confusing, slow product. Uh, and uh, how I started was that our two uh, co-founders, Christo and Tabet, they met at a party and they uh, were talking about like moving money between Estonia and the UK. And they figured out that if they just, you know, like exchange money between themselves on a the mid market rate, they could save like five percent. Uh, of the of the transactions they're sending that's how much uh, banks are charging in these like hidden fees that's that's a huge number five percent for for exchanging money is that sounds that sounds high exactly so this is where the vision came from uh we are building uh money without borders um we are transparent with our pricing we are converting every single transaction on the mid-market rate and we are telling you how much we are charging you um so this started from uh two countries uh conversions from gbp uh british pound and euros but now we are like all over the world uh and um our our model is um is super interesting. So how do we get over this, this problem? Uh, how did we build something that was better than what banks did? Um, the story is, is this, uh, we go to each country, we open up bank accounts. That's our banking infrastructure. And this is what I was doing in Europe in 26 countries. And then you pay into that account in your local currency. 
and the local transfers are, are pretty efficient, right? There is no problem there. Then we know that you paid in. You tell us on the website or on the app uh, where you're sending the money to. We tell you how much exactly the recipient is going to get, when the money is going to be there. And we instruct another bank in another country where we also own the bank account to just do the payout. And that's it. And 60% of our transfers are done within 20 seconds, where most banks take like uh, three to five days, you know, to, to move money from one place to the other. So when like people, people use this like 10x thing quite a lot, but it's really true in every aspect of our product. And that's why, that's how we were able to grow. Nice. So when you joined the company, let's talk about where the company was and, and the phenomenal growth that you've seen over the last six years. Yeah. So as I mentioned, um, I think uh, when I joined, we were moving uh, $4 billion uh, a year. Uh, Now we are above $100 billion a year that we are moving. And um, right now we are saving more than one and a half billion pounds uh, for our customers. Uh, This is how much they're saving by using WISE. Uh, compared to if they were like using their banks. Uh, We went from instant transfers, like not being a thing like seven years ago to like 60% of transfers becoming instant internationally. Nice. So what have you seen in the culture of the company growing from 500 to 5,500 in such a short amount of time? Um, That's a, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, A lot of things changed. Uh, Wise is really famous for um, like common sense, uh, quick decision making, being really practical. I think those things still changed, uh, still still stayed. Um, but we've become, you know, just a bit more mature, um, bigger, more resilient, and um, uh, we've learned a lot about like what matters to customers. So we were able to build a, a better product. I would imagine moving money around globally, there's a lot of security concerns and there's a lot of concerns probably about, about who's moving money. How do you guys monitor everything you're doing from the standpoint of, you know, just the crazy world we live in? Um, yeah, it's a very complex thing. I think we are one of the most regulated companies in the world. Um, we have uh, over 25 licenses everywhere. The regulations are similar, but like still different. Um, so we invest like really heavily into um, like understanding those requirements and uh, what, how, we, how we deal with problems is building full stack teams. What I mean by full stack, a full stack team is that um, we don't separate engineers and product managers and bankers and compliance people. Uh, when we see a problem, uh, we organize ourselves around the problem and we make sure that the team has the right composition, the right diversity in terms of approaches, like viewpoints, and all these people come together and are able to solve the problem pretty efficiently. Nice. So what does the future look like for the company? Uh, I think that the problem is still very big. So we are moving, uh, as I mentioned, like billions and billions of dollars and we're saving billions of dollars to our customers. Uh, but there is still room to uh, get to more people, get to more businesses. I'm really passionate about helping U.S. businesses uh, like move money more efficiently uh, overseas, uh, also about consumers. And um, one of our biggest bets is the third uh, part of the product, which is something that we call a WISE platform. So the WISE platform is is going to sound counterintuitive because of the things that I said about like uh, how banks move money, but there are a lot of banks today who use us to become more efficient, to move money between countries. So we created this API where a bank or a corporation can just use that um, to um, empower buys or to give instructions to buys to move money for them. And they don't have to download the app. They don't have to uh, like register here. It's enough for them to just like use our API. So that also has a lot of potential because banks also want to build a better product. So you moved here two years ago. When did wise first set foot in the U S and start hiring people and, and where, where are, where is everybody located? So, uh, why started in the U S in 2015, uh, 
Uh, our first two offices were Tampa and New York. Uh, in Tampa, um, we've have uh, we've had uh, um, almost exclusively like servicing based teams, so customer support operations. And in New York, we've had uh, product managers, uh, engineers, analytics, and more like leadership roles. Um, and this is how we came up with the idea uh, in twenty twenty one that we are going to have a new hub. Uh, and this is going to be in Austin and, um, our philosophy is that we try to build full stack offices as well. So we, we like to have all the functions in the same office, uh, because we believe that that results in the best, uh, like the highest levels of collaboration and then the best outcome for the customers. So how many people do you have in Austin so far? Um, close to 300. And you came over two years ago and part of your role is the head of engineering. So let's talk, let's talk about that. What do you do in, in, in that role? And then we'll talk about Austin. Okay. Uh, so in engineering, um, I'm, uh, part of the, uh, regional tribe and, um, uh, the teams that I'm leading are responsible for finding the product market fit, uh, for the U S customers. So like one, um, theme that we have, uh, looks at the onboarding experience in the U.S. Um, we are very big on uh, getting to customers. We're actually hosting customers in our offices. We've had our CEO here. We sat down with them. Um, we get input on how um, we should improve the product. Um, and then we just do it. We have uh, other teams who are looking after the most efficient ways to move money. Internally, they're building uh, uh, bank uh, partnerships with uh, major U.S. banks. And um, we have uh, a separate team who looks after the WISE account uh, where you can actually like hold money. And um, we've built uh, something that I'm really proud of, uh, which you call the interest product, where, you know, what most banks do is... Um, in order for you to get uh, interest, you have to move your money from your checkings account to your savings account, right? But then you cannot really access it. Uh, you cannot really spend it. So we said, no, uh, that's not the product that we would want to use. So we built it in a way where you hold money on your WISE account. Um, you're gaining interest every single day. You can still use your card. You can spend the money. And uh, then you will get less interest, but you still have complete access to it. So... This was really uh, like amazing uh, because we've been able to basically like negotiate on behalf of our customers with banks to give them money back. Um, and this was a really successful thing that we've built here locally. Nice. And as you're growing in Austin and, you know, you guys have started to get involved a little bit more, raise your profile in Austin. You guys have joined the Austin Technology Council. I'm, I'm talking with some of your people about how to get you involved uh, in other things, sponsoring events, showing up, participating in events. Uh, what is it, you know, a lot of companies come to Austin and open up an office and we never hear from them. You know, why, why is it that you have this desire to make sure that, that the footprint of WISE is, is here in Austin and recognized? Um, we've, uh, we've done this a couple of times, right? So we have uh, 17 offices. We know that we are here to stay in Austin. Uh, we really believe in this mission. This is going to be the U.S. headquarters. Uh, we like to meet interesting people and we like to get get the local insights and we like to contribute as well. Um, so, um, so far, uh, we've been able to hire amazing talent. Uh, these 300 people that I mentioned or close to 300 people that I mentioned is uh, across every single function that exists at WISE from PR to, you know, engineering through, you know, like customer support to operations. So these like last two years were, were really successful for us. And we, we want to build on that and go beyond. Nice. So what do you think is, is great about Austin? Why do you think that wise decided, you know, when they looked beyond Tampa and New York and they said, let's build a place, let's, let's find a place that can be our U S headquarters. Uh, why, why Austin do you think? Uh, I think that, um, Austin had a lot of momentum behind it uh, at the time when we, we made this decision. There are a lot of positive news around, uh, you know, like tech moving into the company. Uh, we've uh, had uh, uh, really good talent reports. Um, and uh, we were really confident that uh, we are going to be able to get um, operations and other functions there as well. So it's, a, it's just like a really good mix where you you see like, tech only companies, as well as, you know, like operations focused companies and banks and, uh, and everything else, uh, 
uh, not just in Austin, but like in, in, in wider Texas. So it's just like, it's, it's like a very rich growing area. Um, and we wanted to get in on the ground floor. Nice. So, you know, you've only been here two years, so, you know, your, your history doesn't go back very far, but, but what have you seen in the Austin tech community the last couple of years? What changes, you know, have been happening and where do you, where do you think we're headed? Um, what I've observed is just, uh, I've, I've met a lot of people, uh, mostly through interviews <laughs> and, uh, and I've seen, you know, like people, um, that moved here very recently from, uh, from really great companies. And, um, um, we've been able to build a really strong team under a really short amount of time in Austin. So that's the, the positive side of it. Um, we've also went to uh, meetups and hosted some, some meetups in the, uh, um, uh, in our, in our new office. And we'd like to do like more of that. And we'd like to help, you know, build a little bit more, uh, on these meetups, uh, it would be great to have, you know, like a bigger meetup for, you know, like Java folks, for example, we are a really big Java shop and we have, you know, a lot of our systems are written in Java. So, um, we also have a lot of engineers who are very passionate about it and really good. Uh, so, um, they, they need an outlet where they want to speak and, and, uh, we want to provide it for them. Nice. So before I move on to my closing questions of, of the interview, what do you wish everybody in Austin knew about Wise? I mean, a lot of people have never heard of you. You haven't been here all that long. What do you wish everybody knew about the company and your presence in Austin? I hope that uh, they would know just how like cool we are, uh, that we are building a market leading product here and uh, just how much we are helping our customers uh, and how much it means, uh, how much the product that we are building means to uh, our customers uh, like every single day. Uh, that's the most, that's the best thing for me. Uh, whenever we talk to them, whenever we host these dinners that I was talking about, it's, uh, uh, it like everything just, you know, like makes sense. Um, yeah. So I ask everybody who comes on the show, cause my personal philosophy is that community collaboration and conversations can solve all problems. And I think we need more of all three of those words in every aspect of our life, more community, more collaborating, more conversations. When I say those words, which one resonates the most with you and why? I would probably choose collaboration um, because like sometimes, you know, like our interests are not aligning. Um, but like if you're collaborating, you're like very much like locked in on the, the similar things, the things that you know, connect you, uh, rather than the thing that, uh, you know, that, that separates you. So I think that's, uh, all of them are positive, but, uh, but that's the most positive word sure. to me. And the last thing I ask everybody who comes on the show and, and you haven't lived here all this long, so it'll be interesting to hear yours. If someone was coming to visit you, let's say one of your friends from Hungary, who's never even been to the United States before was coming to visit you and they flew into Austin, where would you take them to show off What's cool about Austin? Uh, I love the two two places. Uh, I love the Capitol. I think that's a that's a that's a magnificent building, and just like like kind of shows the history uh, of uh, of Austin and Texas as well. Uh, and I really love uh, the Barton Springs and uh, Zilker Park. And there's like an amazing view from Zilker Park uh, into the the downtown area that I I really really, really like. Nice. Well, Balaj, thank you so much for being a guest here on the show. Uh, I look forward to seeing you around the Austin community and helping Wise get more engaged into our Austin tech ecosystem. Uh, again, thank you for your support of the Austin Technology Council. Uh, any last words? Uh, thank you so much for for uh, inviting us and, and giving, us, uh, giving us a platform. Uh, and I would love to meet uh, like more of you in Austin. So if you, uh, if you uh, uh, are interested in our, our openings, we are, we are hiring, like please check out our um, job site. It's uh, www.wise.com slash jobs. Uh, we have a lot of openings still in Austin. So would be, uh, uh, hope to see you also. Sounds fantastic. So again, thank you for being here. And thank you so much to everybody who tuned in and listened. You know, if it wasn't for the audience, why would we do the show? You know, it's one of those things that uh, the more people who listen, uh, the more fun I have doing this show. So make sure that you share this podcast with everybody in your company and all your friends who work in and around our tech community. 
and make sure that your company is supporting the Austin Technology Council. You know what? We're trying to do some cool things. Coming up in just a couple of weeks, we have the Austin Tech Hall of Fame, which is going to be a reception where we're going to give out uh, awards uh, inducting people who were foundational in creating Austin and a 2024 inductee. And we're going to give out the first time founder award because those three things matter. The Austin Technology Council believes we need to celebrate the past. We need to be present in the now and we need to look to the future. And we can't do that alone. We need civic-minded tech leaders to come in and help us uh, do all the things that we're trying to do. So make sure your company is supporting us. You can find out more information at austintechnologycouncil.org. Thanks for listening to the Austin Tech Connect podcast. Make sure your company is a member of the Austin Technology Council and add your voice to the future of our tech ecosystem in Central Texas. 